Hey everybody, it's Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Seduction, a community-based operating system based on Debian Unstable, and it comes in the LXQT desktop environment. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel on Patreon, those links are in the description below. So if you download Seduction OS, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. You've got one panel at the bottom, you've got a dock up here, and what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go to their website, which is seduction.org. I will put that link in the description below, and it's called 2021.2 Farewell. Seduction is an operating system based on the Linux kernel and the GNU project, and there are applications and libraries from Debian. The name Seduction is a play on two words, the word SID, which is the code name of Debian Unstable, and Seduction in the sense of Seduce. It is a rolling release. Specifically, this means that the release of a new version does not require reinstalling the system to get updated packages. Background, Seduction was created in 2011 from the former AptoSID community. More history bits can be read here if you click. The goal of the distribution was and is to involve its users. Wherever it makes sense, the community should have a say. In addition, as much as possible should be given back to Debian. After all, give and take is the basic principle of free software. Seduction is supported and it's got some community backers down here. Let's go back up top. You've got the forum. If you should have problems, come in here. You can look for your question. And if you can't find it, you obviously can ask your question. And then news. And then, of course, downloads, installation media, packages, mirrors, help. There's a manual. There's their wiki. And then development, bug reporting, and source code. So we will go back over to the home screen. And it does have a dark mode for the website. I like that. I'll leave it on dark mode. But should you have any questions or want to come over and download it, this is definitely where you come. Like I said, I'll be sure to include the web address below in the description. So let's go ahead and close out of this. This is your desktop. If you right click, uh, you can create new, select all, invert selection, sorting, show hidden files, show desktop items, create launcher, desktop preferences. You've got your general preferences here, icon sizes. If you want to make those bigger or smaller, change your margins, uh, background. You can go down here and browse for backgrounds. It only comes with a couple out of the box. And then advanced. Visible shortcuts. We don't have any of these visible right now, but if you wanted them, you could click on home. Trash, computer, and network, and apply. And they would put them all over here for you. Or if they're there and you don't want them there, just click, and then you can unapply. So we will close out of that. Down here on the bottom panel, we've got a power button. You've got date time you've got your sound you've got clipboard you've got removable media device manager you got your network interface and then of course us keyboard and then you come all the way over here you've got show desktop and then of course your lxqt configuration we will open that up make it a little bigger you've got appearance let's click on appearance and down here, you can change your QT style if you want, your QT palette, what colors you'd want to change it to. You can make all those changes right here. Like right now, the QT style is Fusion. You've got Windows, Plastic. See, if you change it to Windows and apply, you get a little bit of a different change. You get a little different look. And then you can go back to Fusion and apply, and you can see the way it changes in there. And then you've got your icon theme. At present, we're on Papyrus. If you wanted to go to Papyrus Lite, you could flip that right there, hit apply, and you can see right down here, especially with the speaker, that it got darker. But we'll go back, and if you watch the speaker, it changes back to a light color. So you can change all these down here if you want to. Your LXQT theme. At present, we're on farewell. If you wanted to change it to ambiance, you could, and apply. You see the panel down here get lighter, and it got lighter here as well. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to farewell and apply, and everything went back to darker, with a little bit of transparency to it. And then font, of course, if you wanted your point size a little bigger, you could just go up to 12, click apply, and it would make everything bigger and easier to see. And then, of course, you can change your cursor if you want to, but we're going to leave that alone. So I'm going to close. And then you've got brightness, date and time, desktop, desktop notifications, shortcut keys, power management. And then down here, you've got some system settings. And, of course, synaptic package manager. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then, of course, 
Synaptic Package Manager opens. Right here is a good place to verify the applications you have installed. At the same time, you can also install applications from here. Basically, what you do is you would do a search, type in the name of the application you're trying to find. Once it pops up, you just come over here, mark it. And once you mark it, it states right here to apply. You just click on apply. It will install the application for you. So we will close out of that and we will close out of that. Now, if you come up top to the dock, I'm going to go ahead and open up PC Man, which is your file manager. And as you can see, it's just a fast, clean, quick file manager that lets you do your work and stays out of your way. Let's see what version we are looking at here. We are looking at version 0.16.0. Let's close back out of that. So that is your file manager. And terminal, what we're going to do real quick is see if they have HTOP installed. And they do have HTOP installed. Right now, I have two gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual instance in GNOME boxes. And we are presently using 694 megabytes, which is pretty good. That's pretty light, especially in a QT environment. So, you know, if you do drop this on an older machine that's only got four gigs of RAM, a couple of processors, you'll be good to go. So let's close out of that. Then we're going to open up Featherpad. And Featherpad, it's a simple, clean Linux text editor. You can go down here. You can open up whatever file you need to edit. Once you edit it, save it, and then you'll be good to go. So just simple, clean, fast. You have Nomax Image Lounge pre-installed. Then you have Screen Grab. You have Audacious, SM Player, IRC, Firefox. And then you have Zim Desktop, which is really cool. You can come in here. You can add a notebook. If you just want to call it Notes, click OK. You can come over here and basically keep notes just like Notepad or OneNote from Microsoft. They'd just be locally kept as opposed to being online. That's a nice little application. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then we'll come down here and open up the application manager and accessories. You've got Feather Notes, Feather Pad, LXQT Archiver, Clipper, Games, Graphics. You have Flameshot, you have GIMP installed out of the box, Image Magic, Inkscape, LX Image, LibreOffice Draw, Screen Grab, Internet, Firefox, of course, Hex Chat, Qubit Torrent for your torrents, and Thunderbird for your mail, LibreOffice Suite is installed out of the box, sound and video, you've got Audacious, SMTube, XF Burn, MPV Media Player, you've got Gparted, HTOP, Install Your System, Midnight Commander, Preferences, About LXQT, Leave, and the Lock Screen, of course. If you've never tried LXQT, I would definitely zip on over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual box, take it for a test drive. Or maybe it's not something you want to give a shot to. Maybe it's not something that you want to use. It's too far away from what you're used to. Either way, let me know about it in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.